Welcome everybody, this is the first episode of the Crystal Clear Electronics video series. The first chapter will be divided into four parts. Our first lead presenter is Mr. Saboc Payer, who is a high school teacher at one of our partners. Saboc, would you introduce yourself please? I'm Saboc Payer, mathematics and physics teacher in Sombathei at Eltes Practicing High School. I've been lecturing these materials to my students for years, so you could easily say that I'm an experienced crystal clear electronics teacher. Thank you very much for the short introduction. I'll be sure to talk more about your hobbies and interests later. I'm Gergely Lagler, electrical engineer, one of the founders of Crystal Clear Electronics. Before we get into the studies, a small service announcement. I would like to say a few words about our teaching materials. The Crystal Clear teaching materials are primarily designed for high school students, but some parts are also available for technical schools, universities and all enthusiasts. The curriculum can be downloaded in PDF format from crystalclearelectronics.eu or in Hungarian from kristaltistaelektronika.hu. The mobile application can be downloaded under the same name for the popular Android and iOS platforms. Also follow our Facebook page where we share news about the project. The chapters were typically written and created by experienced engineers who enriched it with their own experiences and were tested by students at workshops partly led by today's presenter in Hungarian, Transylvanian and Slovakian high schools. The first curriculum was written by Zsolt Verasto, whose interesting personal introduction can also be read on the online platforms mentioned by Gergő. Gergő által említett online felületeken is. So let's get started. In the first session, we will review the basics of mathematics, starting with the orders of magnitude. The physical quantities, which are represented by real numbers, can be really big or really small in terms of scale. Look at the following example illustrating the problem. The charge of a proton is Q sub E equals 0 0.0000000, a lot of zeros still, 1602 coulombs. The last digits are 1602. The output power of the Paksh nuclear power plant is P sub Paksh equals 2 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 watts. As you can see, it's quite uncomfortable to work with such numbers as it's hard to pronounce them and it's easy to make mistakes while writing them down. This chapter will discuss two solutions. One of them is the scientific notation. The other one is using prefixes. Both are based on the simplified notation of the powers of 10. When using the scientific notation, the number A is written like this. A equals alpha times 10 to the beta. However, this definition is not complete, as there are endless alpha and beta numbers which satisfy the equation. Therefore, we must make further restrictions which can be different for every discipline. In science, it's widespread to choose alpha the following way. Alpha is greater than or equal to 1 and smaller than 10, or alpha is greater than minus 10 and smaller than or equal to minus 1. In engineering, we usually use the engineering or the technical normal form, where beta is chosen to be a multiple of 3. Let's see how we can write the previous examples with the introduced normal forms. The charge of the proton with normal form is Q sub E equals 1.602 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. The charge of the proton with technical normal form is Q sub E equals 0 0.1602 times 10 to the negative 18 coulombs. The power output of the Paksh nuclear power plant with both scientific notations is P sub Paksh equals 2 times 10 to the 9th watts. For quantities with units of measurement, we can also use the prefix corresponding to the powers of 10. In the SI system of units, these are recorded between 10 to the negative 24 
and 10 to the 24th divisible by 3. Ezek. These are the followings. To mention just a few of the values shown in the table, we will mention the storage capacity of today's hard disks, for which we use the prefix Terra, the symbol for which is capital T, and the numerical value of 10 to the 12th, which is a billion times. In the same way, reducing prefixes are used, for example, the droplet volume of inkjet printers is measured in picoliters, which is the billionth part of a liter, 10 to the minus 12th. I understand that so far, but what happens if I go to the store and ask for 10 million micrograms of bread? 10 million micrograms? Yes. Well, 10 million is 10 on the 7th. The microgram, as we saw from the table, is 10 to the minus 6th. The 10 million micro is then 10 grams, which is not much bread, at most a bun end. I see. Then I won't ask for bread in the shop like that. Let's go on with the lesson. Let's go. Of course, like the scientific notation, the prefix notation is not fixed. Let's see the previous quantities in prefix notation. The charge of the proton is Q sub E equals 160.2 zeptocoulombs and that equals 0 0.1602 attocoulombs. The power output of Paksh nuclear power plant is P sub Paksh equals 2 gigawatts which equals 2000 megawatts. In certain areas some units have prefix notations that are so widespread that we would rarely use any other prefix. This can be true for very small or very large numbers as well. Mass is a good example for this, for which the SI unit is the kilogram and not grams. For example, mass of a proton m sub p equals 1.67 times 10 to the negative 27th kilograms, and the mass of Earth m sub Earth equals 5.97 times 10 to the 24th kilograms. Now let's look at numeral systems. Let's arrange the dots into groups of 10, as in the picture. Then, we can arrange the groups of 10 into other groups of 10, so that way we get groups of 100, which correspond to the second power of 10. Continuing like this gives us groups with increasing powers of 10. If you think about it, any number of dots can be divided into groups if we introduce more and more groups while increasing the power of 10. Numbers are written in the following way. We count how many times a group is present, and write the numbers after each other. In our case, it is 1, 1, 3. However, without any doubt, it could be 3, 1, 1 as well. To be specific, which number applies to which group, the concept of place value has been introduced. According to the accepted writing mode, the place values are written in decreasing order from left to right. The number of digits shows exactly which of place values are in the given number. Now we have reached the most used numeral system in everyday life, the base 10 or decimal numeral system. To identify every single number, we need 10 different symbols, since if there are already 10 pieces of a given power of 10, we consider that there is one piece of the power of one higher. So, for example, 10 groups of 100 will give a group of 1000. The required symbols are the well-known digits 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. This reminds me of counting from 0 to 10 on our fingers. But if one hand represented one local value and the other hand the other, we could count to 5 times 5, 25 on our hands. That's right. In the beginning, other numeral systems were also used. Oh, such as? For example, the Sumerians used the base 6 and base 60 numeral systems, which we no longer see, although if you think about the fact that in mathematics we still measure angles in degrees, this is also a legacy of the base 6 and base 60 numeral systems. Now think about the measurement of time. Of course, we can also use the base 2 numeral system even on our hands, 
So we can count up to 31 on one hand, for example. But this is the binary numeral system, which is going to appear in the next video. Right, we will take a look there. Understood. It comes naturally that we can choose different numbers as a base number, therefore similar to the decimal number system, let's introduce the base 2, also known as the binary numerical system, which is very important for digital electronics. In the binary numeral system, we organize the units into groups of 2 instead of 10. Two groups of 2 make one group of 4, two groups of 4 make a group of 8, and so on. In this case, we work with two different symbols, ones and zeros. This brings us to the simplest possible numerical notation. You can see the grouping of the last examples number 113 in binary numeral system. The binary numeral system has several practical uses apart from its theoretical significance. In electrical engineering, digital electronics, and IT applications, it is way more widespread than the decimal system. Using a number larger than 10 as base number would be uncomfortable because we need more and more symbols. In practice, however, the base 16 or hexadecimal numeral system is used especially in the IT sector. Later we'll see why. In case of hexadecimal numbers, we need 16 different symbols to describe every value. Therefore, the numbers from 0 to 9 need to be supplemented by additional 6 symbols. These are the capital letters of the English alphabet A, B, C, D, E and F. For further discussion, let's introduce the notation A brackets B, which means that a given A number is defined in the numeral system of B. For simplicity, decimal numbers usually have no extra labeling. Let's see an example. 113 brackets 10 is equal to 71 brackets 16 and is equal to 1110001 brackets 2. In practice, the binary, decimal and hexadecimal numeral systems are the most commonly used. We will show how to convert numbers between these systems. Converting a decimal value to any other numeral system leads back to a simple operation. Division with remainder, which gives us two values, a quotient and a residue. For example, dividing 16 by 3, the quotient is 5 and the residue is 1. Or dividing 113 by 5, the quotient is 22, the residue is 3. In this case, we say that the residue of 16 divided by 3 is 1. Or similarly, the residue of 113 divided by 5 is 3. For easier calculation, it's recommended to make all conversions through the decimal numeral system as written below. For practice, let's convert the same number to different numeral systems. We will use the same method as earlier. For example, we convert 10 to the base 5 numeral system as illustrated. We don't have to use the decimal numeral system if the conversion is done between two numeral systems where one of the base numbers is the power of the other one. For example, if we have to convert a number from the base 2 numeral system to base 4, base 8 or base 16 numeral systems. In this case, using the binary form of the number is very handy to convert it to a larger base numeral system. Two consecutive digits of a number in the binary numeral system can be 00, 01, 10 or 11 variations, which clearly correspond to a digit of a four-digit number 0, 1, 2 or 3. It's similarly reasonable that arranging the digits into groups of three gives the base 8 numeral system format. Arranging the digits into groups of four gives the hexadecimal numeral system format. Let's look at the groups of 2 and convert them to the base 8 numeral system.
As you can see, here in the highest group there would be only two digits. We had to add the zero in the front. By making groups of four, we get the hexadecimal numeral system format. Finally, let's see how the number 113 can be converted to a hexadecimal number by using the binary system. As in the previous examples, the highest place value group has to be supplemented to four digits as well. Thank you Mr. Sabocs Payer for the lesson so far. This will be a very important base for understanding crystal clear electronics later on. Now we must say goodbyes for a short time. This was the first video in the first chapter of this series of crystal clear electronics videos. In the next one we'll continue with the Boolean algebra so that we can build and program electronics in the future. Bye! Thank <laughs> you.